Hey guys, Back Photography here, and today we're looking at a fashion photo shoot I did with model Aichi Bandara and a fashion line called Awkward Child, and I'll link both of their Instagrams in the description if you're interested in seeing more of their work. And today we're looking at a sort of urban, uh, quirky, colourful sort of photo shoot um, that we all did together last weekend. And for this photo shoot, we were using off-camera flash, and we were looking for a really bright, colourful, uh, happy, exciting sort of looking photo shoot that was a little bit carefree, and um, we were going for you know silly poses and things like that, just to sort of um, make the photography a little bit more interesting and a little bit more light-hearted than your typical fashion photo shoot. So I'll go through the specs of the camera equipment I used and all of that sort of thing first. What we used in this photo shoot was my Sony a7R2 and that was with a Sigma 50mm 1.4 non-art lens and for all these photos we used off-camera flash so I was using the Godox AD 600 BM Studio Strobe which is the manual version of that strobe and a white plastic bag for the light modifier because I actually forgot my light modifier at home. So I'm just going to show you a few of the photos from the shoot and then we're going to go in depth into one particular photo and we're going to go through the editing in Photoshop and Camera Raw. So this is the image I've decided to show you a more in-depth tutorial on and the reason I chose this photo is because I really think that the clothes, which is what we're trying to promote in these images, really stands out. But not only that, um, Ishii's expression is uh, sort of what the, this brand stands for and it's, the clothing is meant to be really happy clothing that makes you feel positive and um, just sort of resonates good vibes all around. So this, um, the way that she's holding herself here, her facial expression really works with the branding of this organization. So let's go through the camera settings uh, when I took this photo. We were at an aperture of 1.8, a shutter speed of 1 500th of a second, and an ISO of 200. And again, this was shot with a 50mm prime lens. So why did I choose these settings? Well, first of all, we have an aperture of 1.8, just so we really blur out the background and draw focus to the subject, which is Ishii and her colorful clothing. So if you shoot at a higher aperture, let's say like a 4, 5.6, you get a lot more sharpness in the background. And for a picture like this, where we really want to draw focus to the subject, uh, we want to blow out the background. So I chose a shutter speed of 1 500th of a second. And that's just so I can cut out some of the ambient light that was in the background, although we can still see a little bit there, just so we can get an idea of the background and what it was like. Um, but also I wanted to freeze um, Ishii where she was because she was moving quite a lot so if I shot much lower let's say 1 1 60th or 1 1 25th something like that we could have seen a bit of motion blur in her so 1 500th of a second was fine and then I shot at ISO 200 which is a nice low ISO so that we didn't have much noise in the shadows and uh, no blown out highlights in this image. I probably should have shot at an ISO of 100 which is the native ISO of my sensor but camera sensors are getting so good these days that the difference between ISO 100 and 200 in terms of the fidelity and dynamic range of the image really doesn't make a huge amount of difference in these sorts of conditions. So with the flash I shot at a power of 1 64th so where we were in this alleyway, it was actually completely overcast and the sun was behind the buildings. So I didn't need to do any massive powerful flash work to overpower any lights. We were just sort of trying to illuminate Ishii and the clothing uh, a little bit more than the surrounding areas. Here is a lighting diagram of the image. So the Godox AD600 was placed to the left of Ishii and also above her as well, shooting downward. And that was basically to make um, half of her face and body brighter than the other and that kind of creates um, a bit more depth to the image because you have a bit more of a three-dimensional looking image rather than just having uh, sort of one level of exposure throughout the entire body. And then I shot from the right uh, facing towards her as well. So the reason I also shot um, from to the right and sort of down the alleyway is to produce the leading lines that you see in the image as well, just to give the image a little bit more complexity and to make it a little bit more interesting. So let's jump into Photoshop now and look at the editing process of this image. 
Okay, so I'm going to do this edit a little bit differently. I'm actually going to narrate as I'm editing it. So I might go back and forth a little bit with things that I don't think look very good or things I want to change, um, but we'll just see how I go. And it might get very long, so if I cut bits out, sorry about that. I don't want to make the video you know, 30 minutes long or anything crazy, um, but we should be okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the clarity up, and that basically just gets a little bit more mid-tone contrast in the image. So I'm just going to boost that up about 15 points, and then I'm going to drop the shadows a little bit as well and also maybe drop the whites a little bit too, yep that looks good and mess around with the exposure. Okay so I think the exposure looks about perfect uh, there, I think I overcooked it a little bit in the camera. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the eyes I'm just going to make the eyes pop a little bit more by adding some exposure into the whites so not too much, it's very easy to overdo this step and uh, give your model laser beam eyes, we don't want to do that, we just want to add a little bit of light like that, so if you overcook it like this for example, when you go back eyes look a little bit crazy, so we just want to add a little bit just to make a bit of a subtle change, so that should be enough. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make her hair a little bit more black, just because my flash essentially made it a little bit um, a little bit higher exposed than the rest of her face and body, because that's sort of like the closest thing to the flash. I'm just going to drop those just so I can see where I've done it. Yep, okay, just a little bit more there. And that looks good. Cool, so just making her hair a little bit darker. And then we're also, while we're here, just going to reset the brush and then make her eyelashes and makeup a little bit darker as well. Same thing uh, with the whites of the eyes. Don't want to go too crazy on this and make her eyes look super out of place. Just going to make this bit darker too. And I reckon that looks pretty good so far. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth out her skin. Her skin actually looks really awesome, but this is a fashion shoot, so you do have to go um, a little bit crazier than you normally would with this sort of stuff. I'm just going to drop the exposure shadows and black so I can use this paintbrush as a masking tool. There is a masking tool in Camera Raw, um, and I remember one of the commenters of my YouTube channel did show me it, and thank you very much for showing me, but I think I've forgotten um, exactly where that is, and I'm so used to doing it this way now, and it does basically the same thing, um, that I'll just do it this way. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just sort of masking all the parts of her skin that I want to make smoother, uh, just to make her skin look a little bit more porcelain, a little bit more uh, quote-unquote perfect. I don't want to use the word perfect just because um, yeah, her skin's fine as it is, um, but in a model -y sort of way, um, you know, the, the more porcelain looking your skin is, the better. So I'm just going to finish uh, highlighting all this. And then we'll do her neck as well, just making sure not to do any contrasting lines, because we want to keep those sharp, otherwise the image will start looking a bit strange um, if you if you blur out those lines. So for example, we wouldn't want to do this area here, just because um, if you do go over um, contrasting lines too much, it does start to make the image look fake. And also you don't have to be super, super uh, careful with this, you can sort of just slapdash it together and that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to get rid of those blacks and shadows and exposure and then what we're left with is the clarity slider where you can change how smooth or how unsmooth you want the skin. I normally drop it to around 30 points. That looks pretty good I think so I'm just going to go back again and that's looking really good so far. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the saturations because with this image um, the clothing is what we're trying to advertise here so we want to make the clothing look as bold as possible. Now they already look pretty hectically bold um, but we can just boost these up and make them look really, really crazy bold. So you can see with the blue one, it sort of um, messes with this blue wall here as well. So we might just drop that one down a little bit just because we don't want to make the entire scene crazy colorful. We just want to make Ishii and her clothing colorful. So that's everything I'm going to do in Camera Raw. Let's jump into native Photoshop now and finish off the editing process. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of any big blemishes that I see on her face. Um, Normally I wouldn't do this if I was doing like a portrait session, but as I said, because it's fashion, um, it's sort of expected that you make models look um, almost unnaturally perfect. So just getting rid of any blemishes and that sort of thing, just to make her skin look a little bit more smooth. But there's not really much work to do here. And I'm not going to bore you with 30 minutes of me editing skin either, because that can get pretty, pretty boring. So I reckon that's probably about it for the skin. 
Yep, cool, alright, so once we've done that, I might just make the background a little bit more blurry. We did shoot at f1.8, which is um, a pretty low aperture anyway, so the background is pretty blurred out, but just to make her stand out a little bit more, and then we do select inverse selection, and then we do filter, blur, Gaussian blur, just one pixel, and then we move the selection over just a little bit, just so that we don't get a hard line where we're blurring. Uh, the image and then we just do a few more blurs and that's really just to make the background a little bit more blurry and her stand out a little bit more. Uh, I reckon that's pretty much it for this image. I might just do one extra thing because I don't really like how this composition is sitting at the moment. I really wish it was composed something like that and there are a few things we can do here um, to make this image look composed that way. So make a selection using this tool here, right click, free transform, right click again and distort and you can just, it's probably a little too much actually, um, we'll go to about here and then we'll do the same thing for here. So I didn't want to go all the way to the end just because it started to make it all look a little bit strange and warped. But now what I can do is I can just do another selection here, and because there's not so much space here that's white, when I do a content-aware content deletion, which is basically where I just click the delete button while this is locked and have the content-aware tab on, um, it actually auto-fills this in what the computer considers to be the correct thing. And that looks pretty close, apart from this little thing here looking a bit strange and this little thing here looking a bit strange, but um, we can always delete them and just sort of keep going until we uh, get something we like. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, you can you can get very pedantic about this and sort of delete all the little bits that look strange, but just for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna you know, keep it quick and sort of rough. Um, like there, we could you know spend a while fixing that, but I'm not gonna bother this time. Yeah, so I might actually just do another distort, but um, use a little bit of this area here and just see if I can get away with doing it that way. So what we'll do is we'll take a whole another selection like this, and we'll do the same thing again, just distorting it a little bit more. So I think maybe to about, maybe about, we can also bend it down just so we can get uh, the ground looking correct too. So maybe we'll go to about here, like that. Um, and then what we can do is we can fix that bit up there. Fix all this bit up here. Then we're just left with this little area here, which I think we can probably get away with fixing. See, that's very, very close. Um, we just need to fix that little section there. And yeah, you can spend a lot of time fixing that, but um, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to leave it there, just because I don't want to make the video 30 minutes long. So thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. Uh, make sure you leave a comment as well and tell me what you thought of the uh, final image. And once again, thank you very much for watching.